Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I did a video yesterday where I was talking about a medicine that helped me so much, and then I didn't mention what it was. <laughs> so it's uh, pantoprazole, um, and uh, I was trying omega prazole or some shit like that before, and that was not working very well. But this pantoprazole is uh, amazing. It's a uh, prescription in America, so I'm gonna go get a prescription for that. And uh, Jawbreakers Forever. Uh, the uh, interiors are starting to be colored. I saw the first three pages yesterday. Uh, Narwhal has completed the first draft of Runner. I checked the first half of the book, so I think, you know, maybe one or two small changes, and then that will be complete. I'm still having problems with this printer, though. I cannot get this thing to connect to my new tablet for anything, so I don't know what I'm going to do. Order a new freaking printer just because it works perfectly fine. It was never dropped. Anyway, so uh, somebody sent me in this email, and it was the uh, lists of a bunch of comic book pros. And I've done, uh, I've done a video about this before, where I was saying all of the hot talent, you know, this is probably four years ago at the time, Tom King, Scott Snyder, in their 40s. So now it's four years later, and uh, it, it looks like the average age of a comic book professional, specifically writers is 45. Now I'm just going to start with the most controversial one because this drives me nuts. Gail Simone claims to be 48 when she was clearly pushing 40 when she got into the industry 20 years ago. Also, I remember literally when Obama was president, her talking about her son that was in college, and she also said that you know, Batgirl means so much to her because she was watching the Adam West Batman show and she saw the first episode with Batgirl and, you know, the implication was that it was not on repeats. Uh, so I'm going to say she's about 10 years older than she says. She, uh, let's just say late 50s. So uh, we start right here. Vida Ayala. I know she acts like a kid on Sesame Street learning to sound out the word cat, but she is 37. She's pushing 40. Kelly Sue DeConnick is 52. Dan Slott is 55. Peter David is 65. Tom King is 44. Donny Cates, 38. Jason Aaron, 49. Zeb Wells, 45. Bisexual Al Ewing, 45. Bisexual Christopher Cantwell is 41. Ryan North is 41. Kieran Gillen is 46. Mariko Tamaki is 46. Jerry Dugan is 48. Cy Spurrier is 41. Steve Orlando is 37. Benjamin Percy is 43. John Ridley is 56. Scott Snyder is 46. Chip Zdarsky is 46. Scotty Young is 44. Gene Luen Yang is 49. Kyle Higgins, 37. Charles Soule, 48. Jeff Johns, 49. Cena Grace, 36. Mark Wade, 60. Jeff Thorne, 52. Tom Taylor, 43. Gary Witta, he's doing that Batman the Fortress right now, 50. Teeny Howard is 36. James Tinney, and this one is surprising, only 34. G. Willow Wilson, 39. Mark Russell, 51. Kavon Scott, uh, 49. But then he mentions others where he couldn't quite determine what their age was. He said Kelly Thompson, he thinks, is about late 30s. Same with Danny Lohr. Leigh Williams, around 35. T. Franklin, probably in her 40s. Then he points out that Eric July, even though he acts very mature for his age, is only 32. And uh, this is just shocking to me because I'm reading, you know, this uh, history of the Wildstorm Studios and it's all these people getting their first work at 18 and 19. And then I'm remembering... People like Frank Miller, who got into, again, the industry about the same age. So he was born in 1957. His Daredevil run begins in 1979. He's 22. There was a couple issues written by Roger McKenzie, and then he took over writing. So he was doing those classic stories that have lasted for decades and been reprinted innumerable times. 23. Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, first issue released in 1986. He's 29 years old. So let's look at Alan Moore, born in 1953, bit of an old soul. So he had his, you know, Marvel UK era. But let's just go to the uh, American. So he starts writing The Saga of the Swamp Thing in 1983. He's 30 years old. Watchmen, when he's 33. The Killing Joke, when he's 34. And again, I just want to point out 
that the youngest age on that list of the writers currently working was James Tinian at 34. Frank Miller and Alan Moore could have retired off of their works completed by the time they were 34. Not just artistically, but financially. We have this embolism in the system. Whereas you see the age, I'm pretty much the average age of a writer in comics right now. And it's because I'm from the last generation where there was a true excitement and an idea that you could get into the industry. Now, there was a lot of excitement about 15 years ago with the Ultimate line and then stuff like Civil War. I'm talking specifically about Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Millar. The problem is that was not a pathway. It was like, you know, two people becoming superstar writers and basically being able to write their own ticket for 20 years. That's not the same as the 80s and 90s where there was hundreds of people actively working and having vibrant careers and then seeing a couple of luminaries, Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, stuff like that, really rock it up there. Frank Miller and Alan Moore were from the generation, you know, before that generation. But still, um, I have to say that this looks like the last decade that truly captured an entire generation and made them want to do comics as their career was the 1990s. I was looking at this one just super SJW. She's always causing problems. She's always complaining about everything. They said, you know, what's your favorite costume ever in comics? It was Jim Lee drawing Rogue in 1991. That was it. The last time there was real excitement that drew in an entire generation that wanted to work in comics was the 90s, specifically the early 90s. So we have this giant embolism. We have this giant pocket of air in between 1990s to right now. And that's why I say this is the last generation. There's nobody in their 20s really stepping up to, to do anything. Several of these people are within, you know, five to ten years of retiring in America, getting, you know, retirement benefits. And there was all of this making fun of the 1990s, but it was the last generation that truly recruited a new generation. Because, you know, Rob Liefeld, he's in his 50s as well. He was reading, you know, George Perez stuff in, you know, 1978. That's what got him excited. So there really hasn't been anything to excite and entice people into looking at comics as a career since the early 1990s. So it's not the cheeriest video, but I really think we are in the final generation. When I'm the average age of a writer and I'm pushing 50, that's a huge problem for a medium. And sadly, I do not think that crowdfunding is going to save it. I think crowdfunding is going to go well for another five years or so. And then it's going to have to turn into something else like crowdfunding plus, kind of like what Eric July is doing. Or just, and I mean, I'm telling you, the old system was great. Having the newsstand plus the direct market, which included indies, which included you could start your own indie, that was a perfect system that was basically destroyed in the last five to ten years. So a bit of a bummer. Sorry about that. I mean, an asteroid's going to destroy the Earth in 50 million years anyway, so, eh. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.